photograph from a newspaper. And it was these little kids, these little three-year-old kids at nursery school. And it was, it said, here's a, it was Christmas time, it said, here's a Christian kid, and here's a Jewish kid, here's a Muslim kid, and here's a Hindu kid. And you go, aww, you're playing together. And you think, well, what if they said, here's a neoliberal kid, here's a conservative kid, here's a libertarian kid. I mean, they're three years old. They're not Christians, Muslims, Jews, they don't even know what those things are. And yet we blindly accept that you can label children at a time before, and so that's the kind of thing that I think I've come to really appreciate about Richard's approach. I was just going to say, when, when we first approached Lawrence about making this film, it, unabashedly we were basically fanboys. <laughs> and being able to kind of like share the stage when he talks like that, is the best part of making movies. <laughs> Thank you. But I, anyway, I, uh, yeah, anyway, I will return the favor. Yeah, I think you did it. And these guys are, this is the, yeah, I just think you did a great job. I yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder, uh, you heard about other scientists, that the church has approached them to buy them out and wanted to write books or something, especially they are after people that they have done a lot of research and they have uh, published like 100 papers, they've been in... Uh, well, there, there, the church tries, the Catholic Church, and, no, I don't want you to make a diatribe. I'll answer your question, but I don't want to read, hear you to read your, your thing. I'm sorry. Um, the, church, the Catholic Church has tried, I think since Galileo, to, um, to build some apparent partnership with, with scientists, the Pontifical Academy. I've been at the Pontifical Academy. I was invited there once, too much to my amazement. Um, and I think... Um, of course, the church is eager to build a rapprochement with science, to suggest that there isn't a fundamental inconsistency. Uh, and, and in fact, I wrote, I, I actually communicated with the former Pope, um, Benedict, um, about once when a, 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 a cardinal was, was uh, I'd written a piece in the New York Times, and then he wrote a, about evolution and how the Catholic Church actually in their if you read the, 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 the doctrines of the Catholic Church, they buy evolution. They talk about uh, what essentially is random phenomena. They even accept that. Because they have to, because that's the way it worked. And they, they've been burned before. And burned a lot of others. But, uh, but, but so this cardinal came out and said, well, you know, evolution, the church doesn't buy evolution. I got really worried about that. And it's a long story, but I wrote the Pope. And I FedExed him. And, um, and, and, um, and they actually, I was very happy to see the Vatican paper afterwards that we reaffirm our, our faith evolution. So I think they're trying to make it clear, but that they, they have, it's in their interest. I mean, it's the interest of any rational theologian, and that sounds like an oxymoron, but it's not completely that. Anyone who views themselves as a scholar can, cannot deny the evidence of reality. So it's in their interest to try and suggest that somehow their doctrines are consistent with the evidence of reality. And I've been on stage with some very fancy theologians. And it's amazing to me to see how, how they make epicycles within epicycles, the incredible leaps and intense logical arguments, that the way they twist things to try and, which they have to do, to try and make it seem consistent. So there's a big effort on behalf of the church to do that. And there are some very religious scientists, and, and, and um, people point that out, that somehow they're religious scientists, so what's the problem? And science, and all, all the great scientists like Newton and Darwin and others were religious. Well, the point is that scientists, believe it or not, are human. And like all humans, we not only have to believe 10 impossible things before breakfast to get up in the morning, <laughs> to believe that we love our wives or we like our jobs or something, just to go to work, <laughs> and scientists, we all are capable of believing inconsistent things in our minds and holding them in our minds. So the fact that some scientists are religious is no more significant than the fact that some scientists are pedophiles. Or whatever. Uh, I mean, or Republicans. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It just means they're human. And so, anyway, I think there's certainly an effort, but I don't know any effort to buy people off, except for the Templeton Foundation, which does try to buy people I, off. I know the yeah, I know you know, but uh, we've no, talked no, before, no, and we, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off. Not mentioning name, name, but the guy I know, I was in every conference seminar, he was never religious. All of a sudden, he's bringing the first... Uh, okay, the maybe, maybe there's one person who's been bought off, but, but, 
But there are some foundations, and in my opinion, the Temple Land Foundation tries to do that. And you'll notice when they gave a pro give a prize in religion, what used to be a prize in religion, what used to be called the Temple Land Prize in Religion, it's given to physicists all the time. And why? Because it validates what they're doing, and, and it's uh, it's it's disgusting, and it's unfortunate, in my opinion. Anyway, um, any questions for these guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are the women? Um, yeah. that, that was unfortunate. I mean, it just again, when you set out to make a documentary and you have three weeks to prepare, you kind of get what you can get. And it was just unfortunate that there weren't that many speaking or around at the time. I mean, we tried very hard to. Um, uh, Is that like truly representative of what's like women in that? Society? Well, I mean, I, well, I, I think you know the problem. I'm going to at least his defense because I was at the Nobel Prizes a few years ago and. And they were very honest about it. There was, there was actually this. It was a woman who won the Nobel Prize too, and it was, and it was, um, and they got up and they said, "You'll notice there aren't many women on this stage getting the Nobel Prize." And we, and the fact is that the Nobel Prize, for better or worse, is given not for work done now, but for work that's done been done 40 or 50 years ago. And there just weren't, the, by the sociology of the fields, there weren't women doing that 40 or 50 years ago. There will be. 40, 50 years from now, there will be. And I think, for, for better or worse, what you're seeing is the same thing. I mean, it's a lot of old people, old white men, but, but hopefully, the point of this is to try and encourage it so that when a movie like this is made 40 years from now, it won't be the case. So I think it's just a matter of the fact that, that for better or worse, if you look at the scientists or other people, because of the sociology who've attained some repute by their age, if nothing else, that you see that, but I don't think it's that skewed. And and we and there was definite efforts in making the movie. I know we reached out to to uh, uh, a number of other women, but it was just scheduling. And and the other thing, unfortunately, and this is a, a well-known quantity, I think, it happens that a, a, a prominent woman is in huge demand in in many fields. Uh, and and uh, and we have that problem in my origins project when we try to have panels. Um, it's just very difficult to schedule because, uh, um, you know, everyone wants to have a diverse panel. And I think that's also the, way it is. the hope is that, I mean, we live in a different time now and, and you know, things like this will encourage people to think, but, but also, um, you know, there, there's, there's a meme, a, a, a Facebook poster that I've seen going around which shows, you know, like little boys get Lincoln Logs and Rector sets and Legos to build and create things and little girls get dolls. It kind of made me think a little bit about, you know, I, you know, for what it's worth. But it, the fact that those kind of ideas are circulating much more easily now, it's, it's a different world. And electronic, like, like Dan Bennett says in the film, everything's changing because of the internet and the, um, the way information can be disseminated. And I was, I was, I mean, I was flattered that they chose to end, end the, the movie with my speech at the Reason Round. But uh, I meant what I said. I, I wasn't just playing lip service to get, a, to get applause. I wrote a piece. I, I, it's essential. There's no way we're going to make progress in the world without the education of women. It's the one most important thing we can do uh, in the developing world for many, many reasons. Not just because educated women will ensure that their children are educated, but they'll also ensure that it, 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 the, the economies are better. And so it's 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 an essential thing that we need to do. And, and you're absolutely right. We got to make the message, and and we got to be inclusive. But I, but um, it was just an accident of filmmaking. You do what my friend Woody Allen would say, or you know, you just do with what you do, can do at the time. And if you have New York, you make it New York. Yeah. If we make another one, we'll rectify that situation. <laughs> Young woman, it's still an inspiring movie. Thank you. I don't know how much time we have for, I'd yeah, like ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay. Um, well, let's take a question from another young woman right there. There wasn't an epiphany. Did you hear the question? The question is, you know, a lot of people when they're raised, they, you know, they have that turn that what the fuck moment. I think you said um, when when you you know you brought up religious and suddenly you, you know you have this epiphany. Then the question was, was I relate, raised religious? Um, no, Richard was raised in a more religious family than me. I think um, 
I was a, brought up in a Jewish family, and, and very few Jewish families I know are religious. Um, <laughs> so I was bar mitzvah, and I did all that, and that was enough. For, for a while, I was anti-Semitic after that. But, um, uh, but um, when I, it was just a gradual thing for me. I actually read the Bible, I read the Quran, I read. I mean, I read everything when I was a kid. I loved, read, I liked to read, and I. I can't say I didn't believe when I was younger. I was intrigued and fascinated. And I heard these stories, and they were, in some sense, heartwarming and sort of seemed inspirational. And 